Good evening and welcome to the Swanee County Commission Board yep. meeting. It is now 6 o'clock. I've asked Clyde Fleming to open his invocation and pledge. Let's pray. This afternoon, our Father, we come in your most holy name. We thank you for all your blessings, your many blessings that you bestowed upon us. We thank you for a portion of life, health, and strength. We thank you for the angels that watched over us while we slumbered and slept. We pray today that you be with us in our meeting while we do the county business. Bless our country as a whole. Bless those, oh God, that were in the catastrophe. Pray to bless those families. Bless Chief Summers today in his time and his bereavement, Father. I know that you're able. I know you can do all things except fail. Father, we call on you on these times, and we pray that you be with us and take care of your children. These and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right, jumping right into our first order of business tonight, approval of minutes. Approval of minutes from September 26, 2017 final budget hearing and September 26, 2017 regular scheduled board meeting. Make motion to approve. Second. Yeah, motion to approve by Commissioner Sessions. Second by that was Richardson, Commissioner Richardson. Any discussion or any changes? Hear none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. Consent agendas. We're going to pull item number three for discussion. So I need a motion or unless anyone else has anything that needs to be pulled. Two, four, and five. So moved. Second. Thank you. Got a motion to approve by Commissioner Richardson. Second by Commissioner Fleming. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Uh, item number three, approval of uh, Tourist Development Council recommendations. Uh, Dr. Jackson, I think their board might have a couple questions for you, if you don't mind. Alvin Jackson, Economic Development, Tourist um, Development. <laughs> <laughs> all, all I, my only concern is, would you just expound a little bit on, on the, uh, the Do Good Media uh, and Black dog, as far as what we're getting for our money. Okay, um, the on commission, Mike. The mic is missing. Yep, I'm sorry. I got it way down the other way. Sorry. On, on both of them, both of those. Just items? a little, little information on either one. Both okay. Them. Uh, let me just start out with Do Good Media. Well, let me just start out with the uh, Black Dog. Uh, Black Dog is is the we're the website developer and the uh, advertising agency that would be uh, doing our, our branding for our tourist development effort, our logo, and also developing our website. Uh, in <clears throat> November of last year, uh, the Tourist Development uh, uh, Council basically uh, determined that, one, they needed to do a strategic plan, marketing plan. I think I uh, brought the results of that marketing plan. And one of the things uh, that we knew that needed to occur is that we needed to develop a, a what we call a destination uh, website. And in doing that, uh, we put together a, an RFP uh, developed that RFP, and we I think it was in January. Uh, we sent that RFP out, one utilizing our Demand Star, and I think it went out to over 60 um, vendors from our Demand Star. Then we use um, the De De Destination Marketing Association and basically Florida State Demand Association and another 60 vendors were actually contacted. So we actually contacted close to 200 vendors throughout Florida as well as throughout the country. Uh, we ended up with five respondents 
uh, to uh, that RFP, three from um, outer state. Maybe it was six, six. Three from out of state and two from in state. Uh, they were and one local. And basically, we uh, actually uh, reviewed uh, those and recommended three to the TDC board. And Black Dog uh, actually uh, was the company uh, that we uh, began to negotiate with. And uh, the Tourist Development Council, in its uh, due diligence, since April has been uh, negotiating and really working and trying to understand uh, the product that they would get, and making sure that this firm uh, would be the appropriate fit for Swanee County. Just a little bit of information about that one. Yeah. I'll, I'll also, we'll add that. Um, one of the reasons that we've held off till this point was anticipation for the hiring of the uh, marketing director. Right. Because uh, one of the recommendations from Black Dog was to take the marketing director and bring them in at the same time so right. that as they're building the website that they would be familiar with the product that they're producing and that they could kind of uh, train them in, in what they'll be needing to do as far as uh, their servicing and running it on a daily basis. Right. That would kind of answer my question. I, I was going to ask what about accessibility? I see they're from Miami. Yeah. Well, one of the things that really gave them the edge over the other company, there were two companies, uh, was the uh, platform form that they were there uh, proposing to use, WordPress. And WordPress, uh, uh, the intent is that basically we can utilize and make the changes in-house and uh, the, all the content management uh, from in-house. So that's why they... They strongly recommended that the person be on board and start out with them on the whole design and versus it being a proprietary uh, uh, platform. So they will be doing the training and everything? All the well, they, they will be working with them side by side as they're developing the, uh, the website, yes. What's the length of time they think before it's complete? Um, I think they said four to six months and and the biggest part is is really on our part where we really need to oh, sorry. Uh, we will need to uh, identify and collect the content and the sites locations uh, the photography the, the videography um, for them to actually uh, they utilize. all work together Excuse me? You, they will be working together? I've I seen there's a, yes. a video as well. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, you, the, you, the price that they gave to do the video and the photography and then to man it from Miami was a lot more than we were comfortable with obligating the TDC or the board to. So we looked for local on the uh, person to run the site, and we also went out um, for local or for anybody, but wound up with a local vendor to do the, the photography and the video. And it's a lot less. Mm -hmm. and, and it's going to be marketing Swanee County, and we kind of felt that somebody that was from here she knows the, the area sure. mm -hmm. that w w would give us a good quality product of what we're trying to advertise because they know us. Right. Now, will you guys have, like, real-time? Um... It has to be. Okay. It has to be real-time. Okay. I mean... And that's, and, and, and that's why we have to have someone that has the capabilities of keeping it updated. Okay. Okay. Any further questions? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I just have one question. Um, I'm following the numbers on your agenda uh, on the front, front page, $5,000 for, um, uh, for the branding uh, logo design. Um, I got a problem with the second number in your... Estimate shows 30,500 and then your front page shows 30,000. So I need to know if we're going to be voting on 57,000 or 56,500. Your question? 
question is on your uh, phase one of your website design. Mm -hmm. uh, it shows on your estimate 30,500. Mm -hmm. And it shows on your uh, summary page that we're that what you're asking for mm -hmm. is only 30,000. So I don't know if it's a typo, but it's, it's a typo. The, the bottom line at 57,000 versus 56,500. 30,500. So it should be that bottom number should be 57,000 even, correct? Yes. Yeah. Right, any further questions? Do I have a motion to accept TDC recommendations? Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming, second by Commissioner Richardson. Any further discussion? Hear none. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All Exciting aye. times for it tourist is. development because this really gets us in the tourist development business now. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Yeah. Moving on to proclamations and presentations, adoption of resolution proclaiming the month of October 2017, Florida Native Plant Month. Mr. Uh, Chairman? Yes. Just, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, he never went over the other part of it. The, um, sorry, the... Uh, do Good Media? Yeah, the Do Good Media. That's what I was uh, wondering about that one, but... Uh, that was pretty much the photography and the videos that we... That's the local. Okay, I, w I wasn't sure we were voting yeah. on the whole thing. Guys. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, ladies, if you'd like to come up, we'll have Miss Jenny Welch presenting. Jenny Welch, 63 Northeast, 638th Street, Old Town, Florida. Do I read the proclamation or? If you don't mind. Okay. Whereas the Florida Native Plant Society began in the summer of 1980 in Winter Park, Florida, by a group of scientists, educators, and conser conservationists concerned about the loss of Florida's native plants and the introduction of non-native species overtaking natural areas. Whereas the mission of the Florida Native Plant Society is the preservation, conservation, and restoration of the native plants and native plant communities of Florida. Whereas the society now consists of 39 chapters and 3,950 members from all walks of life who volunteer their time, knowledge, and skills in public workshops, participating in land management reviews, restoration projects, work days, and teaching Floridians about the many benefits of native plants. Whereas Suwannee County has an incredible wealth of natural areas to showcase Florida's native plants and native plant communities, whereas the Sparkleberry chapter of FNPS has members who participate in activities that benefit the citizens and environment of Suwannee County, declare October 2017 Florida Native Plant Month in Suwannee County. Florida Native Plant Month recognizes the beauty and biodiversity of Florida's native flowers, trees, plants, and ecosystems. It also helps us promote and promote appreciation and conservation of our precious natural resources and treasures. And we want to thank Suwannee County Commissioners for showing your appreciation for Florida's native plants and, and plant communities with this proclamation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did, did I, can, can I ask you one question? You, mm -hmm. you said you all had 39 members. Is that in Suwannee County? Thir we have 39 chapters. Chapters. And 3,950 members throughout the state. Okay, I got you. I misunderstood. Fifty-three. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Do I have a motion to adopt the resolution complaining, proclaiming October 2017 Native Plant Month? Make motion to adopt. Got a motion by Commissioner Sessions. Have a second? Second. Got a second by Commissioner Hill. Any discussion? Any questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you all very much for coming out and presenting that tonight. All right. Yeah. Uh, moving on to staff reports, uh, Randy Harris, County Administrator and Public Works. Everything that was going to be done is completed, and everything that hasn't been will be done. Thank you. you moving on to item number eight. On. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> Actually, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I, 
I get more opportunity, I guess, than other departments to speak with you on a regular basis. So I won't go over a lot of things that, uh, in detail that we've spoken of before unless you want to ask questions about them. But I, I do want to take the opportunity to just outline some projects that are fairly near-term projects that we've spoken about in budget workshops. These are all budgeted items. Uh, many of these are funded by grants. But I'm going to share this list with you because I have an additional item here, something that we had covered previously related to the Douglas Center. And I want to help utilize this time to put some of that in context. As we go forward this year, the administrator is going to be loaded up. Um, I have functioned as your construction manager on many of these projects working uh, road projects. We work with engineers and have construction inspectors, but we manage everything else in the office. We handle the funds, we handle the grants, we handle invoices when they come in, process everything with your staff. But in addition to that, when we're actually constructing a building, I spend a great deal more time uh, invested in those to make sure that they get constructed properly. Very soon, we will be starting a sewer plant at I-75 and 136. In addition to that, um, we're about to start uh, very soon. We've got bids that will come back, and then we'll be starting the construction of the four-lane section that we're extending uh, west on US-90 with turn lanes to facilitate the catalyst site. That project's been in the works for three or four years now with all the design changes and extensions. As you know, we're also about to start our rail spur uh, for the catalyst site. We have the Mizell building that we'll need to go ahead and uh, do lots of renovations on. And I'll be back with you deciding on what we're going to do on the interior of what I'm going to call office space right now associated with that facility. We've got the Douglas Center restrooms that we'll talk about again in just a moment. The Wellburn collection site that needs to be constructed and a list of chip seal uh, road projects that we will be uh, beginning very soon. So we're going to have our hands full. I'm going to have my hands full. And I wanted to share that with you because the item that I brought in for addition to this is actually a clarification of a conversation that we had previously in a regular board meeting and one that the board voted on. And that was to go ahead and construct the restrooms on the back of the gymnasium. Um, we've got floor plans. We've got uh, some additional plans that go with those, some detailed plans. But uh, I'm going to ask that the board allow me to advertise a request for proposals on that rather than us try to take that on with county staff utilizing inmates. Because I can tell you right now that if we have to use inmates, county staff, that means that I have to go out there as the building contractor and try to manage all of that. And I don't have time. Um, the many projects that we have, the construction projects that we have done, that I've spent my time trying to oversee, I've done that to help us save money. And I think we have saved a great deal of money. But that's a project that I think that we could contract out uh, probably the smaller, one of the smaller projects that we have that we could actually contract out. Uh, if we advertise an RFP, I think we can um, probably get a better, probably a better opportunity to save money than we would with a straight bid because uh, contractors can be creative if we do that. But in any event, uh, we can deal with voting on that question um, on the restrooms later. But I wanted to share that kind of lengthy list of projects. There are other projects as well, but these are the ones that we need to tackle uh, sooner than later, in my mind. So, do you have any questions on any of those? Any questions for Mr. Harris? Or anything no. else? No. Just one question um, How far are we uh, into the cleanup process? How close are we to the end of the cleanup process from the storm? Well, we still have work to do, mostly cleaning up that we pushed off of the roads. Um, I think we could easily have another month or month and a half of that. What I'm trying to do, I think after this week, 
a lot of your regular uh, <coughs> maintenance of roads is going to resume. We took a lot of those people and put them in, you know, different equipment and made them responsible for different things in the last several weeks cleaning up behind the storm. I'm going to try to return more of them back to their regular jobs so that we can stay on top of our routine maintenance of roads and right-of-ways. But we could easily spend another month, month and a half, just continuing to pick up tree debris and having it measured and prepared for uh, claims of reimbursement with FEMA. Any other questions? Thanks, sir. All right, moving on in the general business, discuss the possible board action policy which allows automatic, automatic extension of the declaration of emergency without additional meetings to be determined by the chairman, vice chairman, or county administrator. Turn our attention back to Randy Harris. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, those of you that have been here for a number of years know that we typically extend these declarations uh, when we have an, a big event. Um, it's very common. Uh, very often we reach out, try to find three votes that can show up. Sometimes that's easier than other times. Probably it was more difficult this last occasion. Um, cell phone service was bogged down, power was out, everyone was busy. Um, I would ask that the board consider that we go ahead in future declarations that we just go ahead and specify that they can be extended without additional meetings by the board. Um, and if you agree with that, then the county attorney and I will put some language together. I put some proposed language in there, but we'll come back with uh, an ordinance or policy change for the board to consider if you agree that we should go ahead and do that. Any questions from the board? No. no I, I, I can tell you all from serving as chairman this year and being at the EOC, while most of you all were out with chainsaws and pushing logs and moving logs, when the sheriff looked at me and said, we need to extend this. <laughs> I hope we can get them here. So it just made sense once we approve it. We know an emergency is coming, and we approve it as a board to uh, m move forward and have the, the, the chairman or his designee uh, be able to uh, uh, prove the extension at, when they see fit or when, when, when they know that it needs to be. So, All right. Do you need we'll just, just direction and, from the yeah. board? Yeah, I think everybody's probably on page okay with it. We'll just bring it back yeah. and we'll place it on consent agenda the next time you okay. see it. I, I, would, I would like to say, I had a comment. Um, the chairman called me and checked on me. And it's the first time I've had the chairman to call. The cha he called me and checked on me. The chairman did. And which I was busy. Um, I think I did attempt to, to, to get over there. And I knew you were spending a lot of time over there. But uh, it was just... Just busy. Well, I figured the state had most of their yeah. officers on standby or either on duty. Yeah, yeah. So I was on duty. I, I, I had a feeling that's where you were at when I called you, but I wanted to make sure everything was all right. All right, moving on to item number nine, discuss with possible board action, purchase of a knuckle boom truck included in the budget. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Harris. Commissioners, I'm, I want to pull this. I'll just bring it back, but I wanted to just go ahead and comment tonight that um, in the workshop, we had earlier on submitted a number on our worksheets during the workshop. We added to that. It went from 165 to 205,000. The 205 was an estimate on what it would cost to go to a 40-yard versus the original 26-yard truck. We need to be in the 40-yard business for a couple of reasons. This truck was actually for solid waste. In a prior workshop, I talked to you about how we continue to add these green boxes or all these little eight-yard containers to those sites. Most of you know that those sites are getting going to be too small before long for that. But what we didn't talk about was servicing those concrete bins with yard debris and metal and everything else. I'm trying to do it with the same minimum staffing, and which I can do if I have a truck that's large enough to handle that additional volume. So we need to be in the 40-yard business and get away from these smaller trucks. Um, but I'll go ahead and share with you that what we do um, and have done traditionally, the Solid Waste Department purchases the knuckle boom trucks. After they've had them for six or seven or eight years, uh, that we 
turn them over to the road department. Road department purchases them, and then the solid waste department gets new ones. And that's the way we've done things traditionally over many, many years. So we've got seven or eight of these trucks now. Uh, some of them are just standby trucks that have been worked on many, many times, but we keep them in case one of these knuckle booms breaks down. Uh, during this event, uh, as soon as we got back out on the roads, I think the second day we snapped essentially the boom off of one of those knuckle boom <coughs> trucks trying to pick up trees. The 40-yard truck has a extremely heavy-duty crane apparatus. That boom is much heavier. Everything associated with it is much heavier. It isn't just simply a larger box with the same boom and uh, motor that runs that boom. So I share that with you now because we've got a lighter agenda today when this comes back, maybe in the next meeting we may have a longer agenda, but um, I just wanted you to know that there's a significant difference in the uh, chassis, the box, and the boom apparatus. Um, I sent Mr. Johns to Tallahassee to observe uh, one of these trucks in motion. They use 40-yard uh, knuckle boom trucks there. They're picking up massive trees and loading trucks big logs, groups of logs at a time that we couldn't begin to pick up with uh, the knuckle booms that we have. Um, when I got here seven years ago, it was one of the first big issues that I had to deal with was that of trying to figure out how to repair a boom on a knuckle boom truck when the manufacturer didn't even make those gears for that thing any longer. I actually had to go to a machinist and have gears uh, manufactured for us, fabricated, to repair one uh, that we had in operation. Um, so anyway, it's a big part of your business in solid waste and a big part of your business, as you know, in uh, the road department when it comes to cleaning up behind hurricanes. So uh, I would venture that over many years, hopefully, all we will have is 40-yard trucks, knuckle boom trucks. But I'll bring this back. <coughs> the only reason it wasn't ready tonight was we were trying to get the information on the Sheriff's Association contract and get that back to you and it just didn't get here in time so if we had that um, I'd be able to present it to you but I'll bring it back in the next meeting. Oh, well, is that it? Yes sir. Moving on to item 10 uh, additional agenda items and we had one additional agenda item uh, was to you touched on it just a minute ago construction of the restrooms at the Douglas Center. Okay. Let you have the floor again. We covered it previously, Mr. Chairman. Um, the board had already voted and authorized the construction of those restrooms. Um, I'm requesting that you authorize us to go ahead and advertise a request for proposals. Motion to approve. Uh, motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming. I have a question. What was, do you remember what we originally budgeted for that? We didn't have an actual number. What we had was 140,000, roughly 140,000 in the budget, and then we added 50 to it during this last budget workshop. So we've got $190,000, and we'll just put the proposal out there and see where it hits. Gotcha. In addition to that structure on the back of the gymnasium, it's my opinion that we need to run a new sewer line from the street up onto that property install a manhole up on the property in case we do something different with other buildings later. Gotcha. Um, but we know that the sewer lines, like the water lines, are worn out out there. That's something we need to do. We know where the, the water main comes up on the east side of the building, but the sewer needs to be on the west side. And uh, I'd like to, what I'll do is separate that and not run it with the structure itself because more often than not, the same contractor isn't in the utilities business installing the manholes. Um, so we'll just advertise that separately. Okay. Uh, I had a motion by Commissioner Fleming. Did I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Hale. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. I do have a question. Go ahead. Do you have an idea about how much more the contracting is going to cost? I don't have any idea right now. Okay. Um, and that's kind of where I was going with it. If I was building it, I could, I could make it fit our numbers. But I think 
if, if we advertise, and let me just tell you, if we advertise requests for proposals and we don't get numbers that we're comfortable with, then we don't have to award. Uh, uh, that's what I was fixing to comment at that on. Point and we regroup and decide what we're going to do from there. We'll have a better idea of what the cost yeah. is going to be once we have the proposals back. That's, that's what I was asking. I don't. Do you remember exactly what we budgeted, or did you already answer that? Excuse me. Do you remember exactly what we budgeted? But I can't remember. We, didn't, we never did have a budget for this. We okay. Just had money. What That's we've why done I over the years, we've just had some money that we put in to the Douglas Center, and quite frankly, we haven't put a great deal in there. Um, many years ago, there was some funding that went in, and um, some effort went into beginning some renovations in the cafeteria, and then we had some. Had to get in there and destroy it. Damage. So we had a an insurance check that we received for that, and then we've got some other insurance checks, and then we've had a very little restitution in some of the cases that went to the courts for vandalism. And then we've added some amounts of money, different years, um, and I don't even remember what those amounts were each year. But I think right now we should have about one hundred ninety thousand dollars. Yeah, well, I mean, the sheriff we, gave a couple of times. He gave fit twenty five thousand, and then I mean, we, we got before. plenty in the budget to cover these bathrooms under Douglas Center project right now. So it should be and, so good. and I know they do need bathrooms out there. So yeah, and the pavilion. Let me just tell you on those plans, it's got the pavilion on the back side of the restroom. My thought on that is to separate separate those out as an alternate. So that we get the standalone figure on the restrooms and a separate number on the pavilion, um, and then we'll know. We'll know what we can do out there, or what it's going to cost. Any further questions? I got a motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming, second by Commissioner Hill. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. Moving on to the next additional agenda item. Uh, approval of request for waiver of local match associated with disaster assistance. Mr. Harris? That's, you said it all. I kind of figured I did. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add. I just need authorization for a signature so that we can make that request. Move to approve. Got a motion to approve by Commissioner Richardson. Second. Second, Second by Commissioner Sessions. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. All opposed, same sign. All right, the only other additional agenda item is a, a request from the town of Brantford regarding a storage container. I think they had a lot of uh, <coughs> supplies that they had received during the storm and some other things, and we had some extra containers that used to be stored where the state's attorney's office now is, and uh, they were requesting one of those to store that. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, the sheriff called me about this initially, and we talked, and I know that those we moved all those containers um, off the property next door to build that building and parking lots. Um, some of those containers are not in use. Um, and I'll be quite honest with you, it costs a great deal to move those things back and forth. If You know, typically those types of containers are a couple thousand dollars. If you move it down there, or if you let them take one, I'd let them keep it. Yeah, it costs I want too much to, to move it and then move it again. But I, it's about five. I, I think they got a whoever moved them when we moved them from here gave them the same price to move it. I think it's five hundred dollars to move it and set it back up, which is actually a pretty decent deal on those. Mm -hmm. But to move it and then give it back to us, that'd be a thousand dollars to move it. And you can buy a new one for about twenty five hundred. I, I just or a new used one would be that you just give it to them. I don't have a problem with that. I got a. Um, a letter from them, but the letter states the same thing that this read. They're just asking for Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Do we have one that's uh, that's um, I've, I've seen them in the past where they're not really closed up. They're not really sealed real good and squirrels get in them and in the rust holes and everything else. I think it's most of good. the ones that we have are climate controlled oh. and you open the door, the, the like the bay door. And if I'm not mistaken, they have a wall built in with a regular door going through them, don't they, Eric? Yeah, the yeah. back end of them were just at a regular entry door. So they, they've been modified more than, than just a storage container. That's where we were storing records for the clerk's office before they had to be disposed. And back in Tropical Storm Debbie, um, they had a lot of mold and water damage in some, and they were storing them out there until they could have them cleaned. And uh, once everything was done with the uh, state attorney's parking lot, they were they 
took two, moved them to the 136 at the sheriff's office, and the other three that they didn't need to be relocated to the uh, landfill. Uh, question about the, uh, I don't have a problem get, giving them one at all. I think it's a great idea. My concern is, is when they are no longer in need of it, um, are, you know, are we pretty much giving them freedom to do whatever they want to with it, or if they paid to return it back to the uh, county or what? I mean, so is that something that's their baby? Is it their baby? I think say once we give it to them, it's theirs. Okay. okay. I'm okay yeah, with have it. I mean, we got two more. Clarify it's, it. That's all. Yeah. Well, the next, get, yeah, next list we too. have for a surplus property, just stick it on there, and we're allowed to just take that and give it to them. Surplus it to the town of Brantford. Mm -hmm. all right. If you're going to do that, then go ahead and vote to surplus it. And then yeah. We'll take it out of our inventory, and it becomes right. theirs. I moved if and, we. And then if they have, <laughs> if later they decide to get rid of it, they have to. They can surplus it back to us. Statutes on how to dispose of it. I have a motion to surplus the storage container unit that's located at the landfill to the town of Brantford. So moved. Second. We got a motion to approve by Commissioner Richardson, second by Commissioner Fleming. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same okay. sign. Oh. All right. That was the last one. Moving on to public concerns and comments. Anyone wishing to speak, would step to the podium, state your name, address for the record. Here, none move on to administrator's comments, but I'm pretty sure you probably got that out earlier, didn't you? It's been a pleasure to be here this evening. <laughs> Board members, request comments. So I hear Ms. Richardson. Ms. Fleming. It's been a pleasure to be here. Ms. Hale. Oh, Mr. Chairman, there is one thing I could share quickly. Okay. Um, we are about to begin installing power poles at the collection sites because we're going to put lights out there. Uh, we'll have to pay for that out of solid waste just as a maintenance item, but clearly it, it will be dark there soon as we continue our regular hours. Um, and I'd say at this point we've all had enough opportunity to evaluate what's going on. That change of hours and days of operation has been incredibly successful. We are not fraught with the problems that we had before. Um, but clearly we need to light those things up in the evenings because when the time changes and it's changing now, um, we're going to need some light out there. So you'll, you may hear from people uh, wondering what we're going to be doing about that, but it's coming. Right now we're having a tough time getting companies to come out and help us auger those holes in because they're all out there restoring power poles. But we're working on that, and we'll get that in place as quick as we can. That's good. Mr. Stacey, did you have anything? I just want to make an announcement that um, staff member Jamie Summers' father passed away, and the viewing's going to be tomorrow evening uh, from 5 to 7 at Daniel's Funeral Home, in case nobody knows. And then the, the funeral is actually going to be at 10.30, um, um, graveside on Thursday. Just so y'all keep Jamie in your prayers. All right. The only thing I have is um, I have to notice the board that we made an emergency purchase. Um, what was it, yesterday, the day before? We actually had to place an order on yeah. some materials. It's uh, a number of 48-inch culverts and uh, estimated price about $20,000. Uh, my limit's 15. The chairman can uh, go up, actually can go over 25, but we just, uh, in the policy, we had to waive the competitive bid process so we could get them ordered. We've got a road that's partially closed down right now. Yeah, pipes are actually falling in. The top seven are coming in. That's 20, what, 27th Avenue? Right, up in the northeast part of the county. So, just according to, uh, in just keeping consistent with the policy, um, I was authorized to make that, uh, give Mr. Harris the authorization to make the purchase. Just had to bring it to y'all's attention at uh, the board meeting. Uh, other than that, I don't have anything. If no one else does, a motion to adjourn. Move. Thank you. Right, adjourn. Thank you all for coming out. Did I get you back on the